All right, everybody, welcome back to part four of the Unreal Engine 5 tutorial series for beginners. You guys have made it so far. That means you guys are awesome. There are some people who have already given up, but you haven't. Good job. In this chapter, what we are going to do, we are going to take the modeling tools into an advanced level. You are going to take our ordinary shape right here into an actual spaceship with all these details. Absolutely. Are we ready? Yes, yes, Let's yes. Let's go. Let's go. So the reason why we need to do this is because right now we just have a boring shape, as Farhad said. We want to go ahead and create the sci-fi looking panels. And we're not going to go super detailed. We don't want to spend hours into modeling. You can do that, but that's not the point here. We're just trying to learn the basics. And right now, if you go ahead and place our light bulbs around our scene, it's just going to look really weird. Which is why if you look at our reference here, this is the spaceship that we've already built. Let's just actually go ahead quickly to the main reference that we had before we even started, which is this one. If you look closely, first of all, if you move inside your spaceship, right now we have nothing at the edge. But here you can see there's this light that goes around the hexagon shape. So that's something we have to create at the very end. But also these pillars, I don't know what we call them. Are they pillars? pillars They're not pillars. Columns, whatever. Whatever you want to call it. They're definitely not pillars and columns, but that's what we're going to call them. If you have a better name, let us know in the comments. Brackets? No, 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 definitely not. We're just going to go with pillars. Okay. So these four sections right here with the lights on them, those are our pillars, right? Those are the mini ones. And then there's these larger pillars that we have to create. And that is a shape we're going to create in the advanced modeling tab. So we have to actually go ahead and alter the current mesh that we have. So this was the reference that we had. And then this is the one that we actually created, which is very similar. We have these four, if you count them, right, the mini pillars. And then we have these four larger pillars that later on, we're going to place our lights on. Farad, are you ready? Let's go. Okay, cool. So the first thing we're going to do after our last chapter, me and Farhad realized that our uh, spaceship is a little short. So we're going to enlarge it on the, this is going to be the x-axis, right? So we're going to hit R. And actually, you know what? It's we're going to be precise with this. No, this is not the z-axis. Oh, it is the z-axis. No, it shouldn't be the z-axis. Yeah, it okay. It's because of the pivot point, but that's okay. As long as we're enlarging it on this, this axis that we're looking at right now, the horizontal one, that's good enough for us. So Farah, what is the number we're going for? Let's go 14. 14? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock because I'm only trying to scale it on one axis. I'm going to unlock the scale and we're going to go to 14. That's not bad. That's pretty good. That's exactly what we want. I'm going to go ahead and pull this so that I can actually use this real estate right here. Maybe even a little bit more. Okay, perfect. So we go in. This is exactly yeah. the size that we want. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Remember, kids, size does matter. Yes, it does. Okay, perfect. So now that we have our spaceship, we're going to go ahead and start modeling and altering the mesh. We're going to go back to the selection mode and then look for modeling. Shift 5 is a shortcut. And then we are going to go to model this time around right here. Select it. And we are going to look for polygroup edit. Click that. And this is, if you're coming from Blender, for instance, your edit mode, right? This is where you get to actually see the wireframe that makes up your mesh. Remember the subdivisions that we were talking about earlier? Yeah. We enabled the wireframe to see the faces, the vertices, and the edges. That's precisely what we're looking at right now. And so if you go ahead and hover around our mesh right now, we are actually going to see that we can select the faces of our mesh. So these wide areas, right? These are the faces. These guys, these lines, these edges in between them are our edges. And then the points, these little points, the dots that connect them, those are our vertices. So three things that you need to remember. So if you look to the left side, there's a selection filter. Which ones are we allowed to select? Right now, if you see faces, edges, vertices. We only have faces selected, which is why we can only select faces. But if I were to disable this, we cannot select anything because we have nothing selected. We can go to edges, and you'll see that we can only select the edges. And then we can go to vertices, and we can only select the vertices. So just to show you guys what this does, let's go ahead and maybe select the edges. Yeah. Okay. And Farah, what can we actually do if you select an edge like this? We can pull it out. Let's try it. Exactly. Yeah. So we can use a gizmo right here to rotate, to pull it. We're going to pull it using this red line right here. If you pull it out, look at what happens. Boom. 
I have just that extended. Looks cool, actually. That actually, actually it? looks like. Yeah, you want to keep it? <laughs> <laughs> actually, this is like how people land, right? Yeah. I mean, it's going to go against our reference. So maybe not this time, but I would have liked yeah. to design it like this. Boy, 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 control Z, boy, control Z, control Z. Control Z, okay. All right. Control Z is undo. Control Y inside undo engine is redo, right? Just remember that it's not control shift Z, which is what we're usually used to. So. We're going to control Z that. We can even rotate this, by the way. Uh, you can rotate this. I think you have to rotate like a face. Let's try that. So I'm selecting a face now and I'm rotating it. See what happens. So you can do many, many things altering the mesh just using the selection filters. But we actually want to go ahead and use something else. So we want to have the faces selected. And what we need to actually go ahead and do is create the edges around our spaceship that we're going to use to pull out the different pillars. Remember, we have the four here and the small ones and the four large ones. In order to create these compartments, we're going to be using a tool called Insert Edge Loop. Basically, it's going to insert edges looping all around your mesh. That's why the name is there. So Insert Edge Loops. And on default, so we've already used this, which is why it's not on default. On default, it's set to proportion offset. Farah, what does that do? Means you can select where you want to insert that edge. That's right. But this is manual. We yes. don't want manual. We want equal sizes. We want precise. So we want to go ahead and change this to even. And what even does, it gives you the number of loops that you want. And then, right now it's on two, it's going to automatically place it in the middle. So it's going to decide where the two compartments should be so that it divides it equally into three different parts. So, so if you have two number of loops, you have three parts. Damn right. Okay, so we're actually looking for how many loops? Let's do for four. Four loops? Okay, yeah. This is, this is actually perfect. We already know this number because we've done this many, many times. No, because we are geniuses. I should have said that. Yeah. That's much better. <laughs> You've done this 10 times. That's why we know it. <laughs> but uh, we want to be honest. Yeah. All right? We're not gonna we're not gonna brag about our genius right here. Not now. Not now. Maybe later. So we got the four loops. That's gonna cut our spaceship into five different parts. And we'll tell you exactly why we're doing this in a moment. So depending on the size of your spaceship, you can play with that number and see what number fits best. If you are following the same size as ours, four should be good. Exactly. So if you want to go ahead and confirm this, first of all, we have to find where that is. So you have to select it probably somewhere in the middle and you'll see the lines up here and then hit left mouse click and then it's laid down. But it's not complete yet until you hit accept. So let's go ahead and do that first. Accept. And then go back to polygroup edit. So to go back to edit mode. And right now we can see that our spaceship has these extra compartments, right? And if we go ahead and try to select the faces, now we have these smaller faces rather than the entire line. We can now select each of them independent of each other, which means we can go ahead and use this first compartment for all of our smaller pillars that we're going to pull out and then these larger compartments at the back to divide them again for the bigger pillars, right? I think that's pretty clear. Yeah. So in order to pull out these guys, we again need to go to insert edge loops and create the smaller pillars. So Farhad, if we are trying to pull out four pillars, how many cuts do we need? Eight. Okay. So again, this might be confusing if this is your first time doing 3D, but you'll understand exactly why. So if we're going to create eight, right, it looks like a lot of lines, but this is precisely what we need to pull out four, and you'll see why. So I'm going to lay down my eight cuts right now by clicking left, and you'll see it's there, it's created, perfect, hit accept. Okay, go back to polygroup edit, and you'll see that I now have all these lines. So why did we do eight? Well, before I actually teach you guys how to do the extrusion and pull things out, I'm just going to quickly show you. Check this out. One, two, three, and four. Ta-da! You see? If we had four, we are actually going to pull all of it out. There's going to be five compartments. It's not going to make any sense. You need eight so that you actually have a space in between each of them. So when you pull four out, they actually look like four different small pillars. That's why you got to do eight. So now let's actually teach you guys how you can select and pull them out. First of all, you need to understand what we're trying to pull. Farad, are we trying to pull the floor? No. Nope. No, right? This is where people are going to be walking. Exactly. No or floor, no ceiling, only the sides. Only the sides. This is our design choice, by the way. You can make it different if you want. So how you can actually go ahead and select these, remember, 
We want to go for faces only. We're not trying to pull points or edges. We want to select the entire face. So make sure you have the faces selected. And then by using shift, holding shift, and then dragging and holding your left mouse click button, you'll be able to select these faces all together. So holding shift and then selecting, dragging, selecting until here. And then I've got this part selected. So now I can go ahead and move back, select this part. What if I misselect the part? So let's do that. I misselected all of this. You instead go ahead and use control instead of shift. So control, drag, and it's going to deselect. Perfect. Awesome. So now I want these guys as well. So these smaller ones at the top. And this is just one. I need to do this for every alternating pillar and then do the same thing for the other side. Just a reminder to everybody, to, they need to uncheck the heat back faces on the left side. When Absolutely. They are Absolutely. Have you done it yet? We have done it. Yes. Actually, thank you so much for reminding me of that. This was on by default. Now, what this does is if you were to select this, it selects the back faces as Farah just mentioned. We do not want the back nope. faces to be selected. So control Z, we are going to disable hit back faces. So if you had the same problem, make sure you disable it. Thank you, Farhad. Thank you, student. I'm a good student, I told you. Very good. Better than the master. When I left you, I was but a learner. Now I am the master. Now I am the master. <laughs> are you going to kill me? <laughs> I'm going to kill you, Obi one. You were supposed to be the chosen one. Okay. All right, pull it up. I'm pretty fast at this because... You have I'm, done this a million times. No, because I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> but take your time. If you need to go ahead and pause right now and do it with your own pacing, go ahead and do that. Or you can just listen to our beautiful voices and follow through. So we've done it for one side. Now we're going to do the exact same for the other side. We're going to select them. All right, select, boom, select. If your lighting is not enough, in the middle of this, you can just hit Control L, smooth your lighting, just to adjust it so you can see what you're doing. And then you can pull it up. You can go ahead and continue. While Faraz is selecting all of this, while Faraz is selecting all of this, did you guys know that Polycam sponsored this course for all of you? Faraz, what is Polycam? Polycam is a sponsor of this video. They are a photo scanning application that is available on your devices right now, on your iOS and Android devices, even on the web. And it allows you to take objects in the real world and transform them into 3D objects in your scenes, like Unreal Engine 5. Exactly. So we have now four sections here and four sections here. This already, you can already imagine what this is going to look like, right? We're going to pull them in towards the middle. So how do we do that, Farhad? Let's go and extrude. Okay, perfect. So just making sure I haven't selected anything by mistake. We now have everything selected. Make sure you don't select anything by mistake or hit any other buttons because you're going to lose your selection. We're going to go and look for extrude at the top left right here. You have many other options, by the way. The first time we tried the modeling tool, we went ahead and selected phases and tried every single one of these options to see what they do. You can do that later on. But right now, the one we are going to go for is extrude. So we're going to hit extrude and... I'm going to go back to default because we've already done this and see what happens. This is probably what you're seeing. You're going to see a weird extrusion towards a random shape, like one shape, and it's following your mouse. This is totally not what we're looking for. Farah, what's something that we have we to change We need to here? change some of the parameters on the left. Direction right. mode. And distance mode. And distance mode. So right now, the distance mode is basically saying, follow my cursor for the distance. We want to change this to fixed. fixed. So if we change it to fix, we're going to be using a slider. So it's not no longer following our cursor, which is what we want. It's annoying. So we're going to go to fix, but then it's coming out towards one direction. One direction. Oh my God. <laughs> that was Farhad's favorite like band when he was younger. No yes. <laughs> Justin Bieber and uh, One Direction. I don't think I've ever listened to one of their songs. You have. You have. On sure the radio, yeah. yeah. You memorized their songs, On dude. radio, bro. <laughs> bro, you had Justin Bieber hairstyle. I, I, pull I do right here. now. <laughs> I do right now. Um, if you go to direction mode, it's on single direction. We want to go ahead and change this to selected triangle normals. And just like that, if you pull back your distance, you'll see that you have successfully pulled out the faces to create the shape that we want. Now, this might be a little bit too much. So we're going to maybe make it a little less extruded. Let's go inside real quickly and just look at it. Look at our reference. Farah, what do you think? Maybe 150. We are at 146, right? Let's 150. Just you like round numbers. Yeah. And let's check the wireframes. Turn on the wireframes and see if we are not breaking the mesh. Okay, so show, show wireframe. And if you go to the edges right here, see if you go 
really high with this number, you'll see your mesh breaking. You don't want that, right? That's going to mess up with your, with your mesh later on when you're trying to add materials. Is 150 enough? No, I, think I think so. I okay. think so. I okay. think it shouldn't be too big. Okay, cool. Maybe are, maybe like 165? Yes. I think cool. this, this, this is, is good. good. This, this is good, right? This is very good. I think so. What if we go a bit higher? No, no, no. I think that's too much. I think 170. 170. Sure. All right? Yeah. We're going to hit accept. Okay, cool. Wow. Now, I have to tell you guys why the normals direction was the one that was working. So if this is your first time trying a 3D software, normals have a couple of different definitions. But in this case, normals is basically defining a polygon, a faces direction for the 3D software. So, for example, if you go back to polygroup edit, the reason why single direction wasn't working was because it was saying, take everything, extrude it in one direction, everything towards one direction. But right now, we change it to normals per face, which means the 3D software knows, okay, this face is pointing out this way, so. this face is pointing out this way, and then this face pointing out this way. Go ahead and extrude everything towards their specific normal direction. So that makes sense, right? Yep. That's why that's the option we want to go for. And Farhad, we've successfully done the first wow. part. Okay. What's now, next? Slowly, it's getting the shape of a real spaceship. Yes. Let's go to the columns at the back. Okay. I like that idea. Let's go to polygroup edit. Now, we're going to turn off the wireframe because it's annoying. We'll get to see just the faces and the edges. The wireframe is going to bring in the triangles, and that's too much right now. We don't need it. So we now have access to these bigger boys right here, bigger compartments. We're going to go and add more edge loops, right? Let's do it right now. Okay. So how many do we need for these guys? Let's see. Let's try with two. Two? two okay. Two. Let's go to two loops. And let's try to find where we need to land our cursor. Yeah. Okay, that's perfect. So I guess for us, we need to land one right here, right? One more. And one more at the back here. Uh, I'm going to find where. It it's might take you tricky. some time to find the lines. Yeah, you need yeah, to. Just move around. Gosh. Yeah, you got okay, it. Okay, I see it. I see it. Oh, yes, I, I lost it. I lost it. I lost it. Nah, 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 nah. Oh, my God. Okay, got All right, it. got okay, it. Got cool. It. Landed it. Another one? The last one? You want it? We don't need it, though. How many how many columns do we have now? We don't need it. We have... So I'm going to oh, yeah, leave this three. to... Okay, yeah. sure, sure, sure. So for us, we're going to leave it empty. You can go and build out the entire scene. That's up to you. But because our cameras are going to be here anyways, we don't need the ones at the back. So right now, I can already tell you, if we hit accept and then go back to polygroup edit, this is going to be... Oh, my God. See, this is the bug with the modeling tool right now. That's why Unreal Engine still needs to fix this. But this, this two, I'm going to leave empty, Farhad. Yeah. I'm going to start with one pillar right here. So this is going to be one of the big ones. This is going to be an... Oh, my God. Control Z. This is going to be another one. And then this is going to be the final. Oh, my God. This is going to be the final one. So okay. we got three pillars right here. So I think that's more than enough. Yeah, three big one. Okay, cool. So I'm going to do it again from the beginning so that you guys follow through. So for the three pillars that we're going to do, we're going to leave out the small ones. So this is the small compartments. We're not going to touch that. One of the big ones as well, we're not going to touch. Again, design choice. You can change it according to your own taste. We're going to start with this guy. Exact same procedure. We're going to start from the bottom. We're going to go all the way up. Start from the bottom, now we're here. Start from the bottom, now we're here. Start from the bottom, now we're here. Yeah, start from the bottom, now the whole team. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we got one side selected, right? Perfect. Now we're going to do the same thing for the other side. We see? Okay. Boom, right here. Perfect. All right. Aras, did you know Bad Decision has a weekly podcast? Oh, my God. I did not. Tell me more. How dare you? The, the podcast is posted on YouTube every week, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and we bring guests every single week to interview them. Yes. If you guys haven't checked it out yet... We bring in a lot of 3D artists, right? 3D artists who work with Unreal Engine, who work with Guru, Blender. Punisher. Yes. So if you guys want to learn about their journey, about their life, how they found their first job, how they started their YouTube channel, all these six stories, you can find it on our podcast. Check it out. We're doing sponsorship for our own podcast. Yeah. I like it. Have you paid ourselves for it? Yes. Every week. <laughs> okay, cool. So we've gotten all of the selections done on the left side and on the right side. Farhad, what are we going to do now? Extrude them. Repeat the same steps again. Okay, so when we go to extrude now, we should have the same settings as before, Ooh, which is great. Wow, it looks amazing. It's looking sick already, Just right? click accept. Don't do anything. Okay, no, actually, what do you think about having the bigger boys? 
extruded a little bit more. I actually want them to pull out a little bit more. That's a design choice. That's a design choice. You Absolutely. don't have to do it. You could just click accept. But I, I wanna I wanna make it bigger. Yeah, you can do it. Okay, so I wanna bring it somewhere like here. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes, yes. It looks really cool. I don't want it to be the exact same. Yeah, so maybe somewhere like not 400. 490, 450, 400. maybe 400. Okay. Let me just make sure that we're not breaking our mesh in any part. So you have to make sure you check your mesh, right? You can control Z later on, but this is actually much cooler. Yes. This is looking good. Yeah, this is looking really Slowly, good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is looking really good. Okay, so we've already done this. We can go ahead and hit accept. And just Ooh. like that, we now have... Oh my God, wow. this is already this looking is, really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, I, like I like it. I like it. Congratulations. Okay, let's go. You're What's doing next? this, baby. You're doing this. Wait a second. We're teaching you guys all of these techniques, like modeling and texturing, but frankly, there are faster alternatives, like photogrammetry. That's when you use your phone to take a bunch of photos of a real life object and then turn that object into 3D within minutes and then bring it into Unreal Engine. So we use Polycam for our photogrammetry and they actually sponsored this course so that you guys get 30% off their pro plan. We have all of the details and the promo code in the description. Back to the course. Okay, Farad, what are we going to do next? Inset on the bigger columns. Okay, so if you noticed on our bigger columns right here, where the lights are placed, we actually have a little window within the column itself. The window is pushed inside. And it's just to add a little bit of detail to our scene. In order to create insets, we need to go ahead and select not all of the pillars anymore. We don't want to create insets here, these little sides. We just need the bigger Parts, faces, yeah. right? So bigger faces, exactly. So we're gonna shift select them, shift select, shift select, shift select. We're gonna do the same thing for the other side. Boom, 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 boom. Actually, disable wireframe. I don't want to see it anymore right now. And boom. Okay. So we have all six selected, and we want to go ahead and create our little windows. We do that by going to this option right here called inset. Again, you can read what it does by just hovering your mouse over it. Click inset, and this doesn't have the fixed slider. I don't know why they haven't added it. The way to do it is by just using your viewport and your mouse, and you have to go to your very first face that you selected. You can use your mouse and the line connected to it to find out where Follow that is. Follow the line. Follow, Follow the, the line. line. And you'll see that it's right here. So, Farah, do you see where the inset is right yes. now? Yes. Great choice of colors, Epic Games. <laughs> you can, come on, guys. Make this you like do better. Make this blue or something or green. Um, and we're colorblind as well, so it makes it even harder. <laughs> but I'm seeing the window right now. What do you think about this? I cannot see anything, but okay, sure. <laughs> I think this is fine. Yeah. We're just going to go ahead and click okay. okay. All right. Now I can see it. All right. So this is our little inset. Okay. Now we need to go ahead and push this in. We can go ahead and use the exact same extrude function. We are overusing extrude, aren't we? No, we, we use extrude all the time yeah. in 3D, so I guess it's, it's fine. Yeah. But definitely overusing it in this case, but it's okay. Extrude, but this yeah. time go instead of... Negative, get them in. Absolutely. I mean, this is a cool shape, but this is not what we want. We want to go all the way in. So something like negative 70, I think, would be Oh, fine. that looks clean. Right? Yeah. This looks pretty good. Yes. What do you think? Accept. Perfect. Hit accept. And wow, wow. We're getting there. We are getting there. Let's go. We're getting there. I like that. Everything is too edgy. Yes. Too so sharp. In the world of CG, usually what we end up with is these really harsh edges, actual 90 degree edges, which we don't really have in real life. At a microscopic level, they're just going to be a little bit rounded. So in order to make this less CG, we need to go ahead and bevel it precisely like the iPhone. And the beveling is basically just going to add more detail in the edge and make sure it's not perfectly flat and make it less CG. So in order to do that, we're going to select our mesh. We are doing too much selecting, by the way. We have to. I think if they improve the selecting tool, this would be like 10 times faster. Faster, absolutely. Yeah. So in order to bevel our edges, we're going to select the faces that need to have a bevel around their edges. So that will be all of these faces in the front because we want the edges around here to be beveled. And we also need to select the faces here. So all of these guys. Right, And this is going to take a while, so we're going to show you guys a sped forward version of this, so you can just follow through.
All right. We are done. Everything is selected. Oh my God. Ooh. Wake up. Wake up. We can do it. We can do it. Let's go. Okay, that was hard. But we did it. Okay. So now that we have everything selected, just make sure you've got everything correctly. We now can see that if you go ahead and bevel, it's going to bevel all the edges around these faces, which is exactly what we want, the inner and the outer. And we can find bevel right here. Click it. And if you go closer to these edges, we'll notice exactly what happened. You can go ahead and play with this value right here and see exactly what we did. See? By adding the bevel, we now have divided the shape into two parts. So it's not actually just one line. It's now two. So when light is basically reflecting from these edges, it's not going to be exactly sharp and CG looking, right? So let's leave it at four. I'm going to go here, just show you guys what this looks like here, what it looks like here as well. This is so much better. The only thing is, if you're coming from other 3D softwares, I don't know if Unreal Engine has this, but other 3D softwares, I can add more lines. So right now, it's only adding one. So it's like one and two. In like Blender, you can basically increase the number of subdivisions between these bevels, so it becomes perfectly round. I don't know why they haven't added that yet, but it's still better than nothing, so we're going to go with this. Farah, what do you think about this? Accept. Okay, hit accept. Perfect. Done. One last thing before we go out of our space stream modeling. Yes. What I like to do is go ahead and create a inset here at the bottom and actually pull these guys down. So this shape is perfectly fine. But if you imagine the stormtroopers are going to be this small, right? And this is like this giant wall beside them. I actually want this to be sort of coming in towards the ground. It just makes a cooler shape. So we're going to teach you guys how to do that. Again, design preference. We're going to go to polygroup edit. And we're going to select these edges right here. So one, faces. two, sorry, faces. You're absolutely right. Three, thank you for the collecting me. Has been yes, the master has been shut off. Three, so we have three faces selected. Do you want to do the same thing with this? Uh, try it out? Sure, sure. Let's, let's give it a try. Again, okay. these are all design choices, guys. Do it uh, if actually, you like it. Actually, sorry, I'm not going to do this because, because they're different sizes. Yeah. So I'm afraid I'm going to mess it up. Okay. okay, so I have these six selected. Now, what I want to do is first, instead of just bringing everything down, I'm going to inset it just like we did before to create a little window. And you'll see why in a moment. So inset, go to my first face, which was, where was it? Is it here? Oh, it was right here. First face was right here. So I'm going to inset it to someone like this. Okay, perfect. So we have this little window. Now, what I like to do is go ahead and take this window. So I'm going to go ahead and select one side. I cannot do all six sides together. I have to do side by side to select all six sides and then see what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull it out towards the middle. Check this out. Pull it out toward the middle and then all the way until this line to be precise. So this line right here, I'm going to pull it back. This is like almost perfect. Doesn't need to be exactly precise. And then I'm going to pull it down. Ooh. Do you see that? Ooh. That looks cool. That looks really cool. That looks really cool. Okay. Right? So I'm going to hit accept. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing for the right side. So polygroup edit. I'm going to select these faces. One, two, three. Again, you don't have to do this. This is a design preference. We're going to follow this line. Bring it out. Sorry. We're going to bring it out. Pull it out. Boom. To the line. To the line. It's almost, almost there. Pull it back. And then we're going to pull it down. Ooh. Wow. Boom. Okay, I really like this design. Yes. Accept. Hit accept. Guys, make sure you save. Please, if you have done so much work until now, save. Oh, yeah, I haven't save? saved yet. Oh, Why thank haven't you. you saved? Okay, save all wow, of this. Look. Save selected. Guys, we are done with two chapters of modeling. Great job. This is an amazing progress so far. Yeah, because the thing is, a lot of people who use Unreal Engine, and when we say a lot, we mean ourselves, like until a couple of months ago, didn't really know the extent of the modeling tools. And the fact that you guys already know as a beginner how to use the modeling tools to this extent is freaking amazing. So congrats. So see you guys on the next chapter, which is lighting. Oh my God, that's exciting. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so you get notified when we upload the lighting chapter tomorrow. Ciao. Bye.